Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and this is the Flysky FSI6S transmitter. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can adjust your throttle curve as well as your motor maximum output. Now you might be saying, what the heck are you talking about, throttle curve? This thing looks pretty straight to me. Well, when we say throttle curve, we're talking about the relationship of the throttle stick to the speed that the motor spins, essentially. And we're talking about that relationship in a number format, how it would look on a graph. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So let's get started. Let's plug our battery into our trainer airplane here, our little demonstration airplane. We have our motor. There's no propeller on it. There's this piece of tape so we can see that it is spinning. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our transmitter right here. Uh, it's already on. We're going to press and hold the little lock screen button. Now let me show you what I was talking about with that throttle curve. So let's scroll on down here to throttle curve. Click on that. You see here we have a little graph, this little box right here. So you can see that when we move it, it's moving it like that. Now right right now we have pretty much a linear straight curve. So it's it's not really a curve exactly, it's more like just a line. And the way that you adjust this is by tapping on these different sections. They break it up into essentially, well, five, but you have low, one, two, three, and high. But low is going to be zero. So in any case, if you wanted to lower your maximum output, you would tap on the high and then you would decrease it by pressing the uh, pressing and holding the minus symbol like that and you can do the same for all of these different uh, outputs right here you can either raise them or lower them so for example I know this is a weird example you you would never really want it like this it looks like a mountain uh, but just just to show you that it does work um, now when we raise our throttle it goes up and then it goes up really fast and then it actually goes back down so again that's a that's a weird example and you wouldn't really want it like that you probably want a nice curve you can for example make it so that one spot is sort of flat so maybe you have like an airplane that has a sweet spot that it likes to cruise at and you want to give yourself some more uh, kind of space there um, this would also be kind of like your throttle expo, I guess you could say. So, for example, we want, say we want like a plateau, and then let's make the, the top one be a lot higher. So, let's say we want a little bit extra power, but right here we want it to kind of flatten out. So, we could do that. And you see right here, I'm moving it, but there's no difference in the motor until I get, until I get past that point. There's no difference for that flat line. So um, that could be useful to you because maybe you want to have it like in a stair step fashion for some reason or you want it to be a nice like curve or maybe you want it to be a low throttle until the end. I don't know. You could do whatever you want. Now, if you did want to use the throttle curve to limit your throttle, it's kind of a kind of a longer process, but you can sort of bring this on down. So let's let's just say uh, we want this to be 40 percent and then we would want this to to go down to, oh, I don't know, maybe maybe 30%, something like that. I guess if we if if each one is like a, a quarter of the of the full value, which is 40%. So let's bring this on down to like 20% ish, you know. This one, bring it on down to 10%. Okay. So theoretically we should have 0, 10, 20, 30 and high. So you can see we have a, a flat line here as well, but the highest it's going to be is only 40% of the possible output for the motor. So for example, let's try it out. So again, it might be kind of hard to tell by the sound, but I can tell it's definitely not going at full power like it was before. Now one little thing I noticed about this when I, when I changed the curve like this to make the whole output lower. I noticed that there's actually a lot more play in the throttle before we actually get to spin the motor. So we get up to about, pretty much right up to about 10%. And I think it's it's usually about eight or 10% until the, the motor actually spins up. Now that's kind of bad because that means that this whole area of the throttle is just a dead space. 
uh, like a dead zone, and it kicked me kicked me out of there. So what we can do to fix that, there's two ways that we can fix that. We can go back into the throttle curve and actually increase the lowest throttle point instead of zero. We can increase it about, I think, 8%. You want a little bit of wiggle room. So for example, if we keep going at 10%, it'll turn on. So let's say 8%, maybe even less than that, or more than that, maybe 9%. Yeah, no, we're still, actually, that's not great. So it looks like if you do have your your first position as 10%, there's not a whole lot you can do as far as increasing the lowest value in order in order to get rid of this dead, dead space on the throttle right there. What I think is a better option is if we go back to the end points right here, and for channel three, for the low end points, or the, the bottom end points, let's make sure we're getting the right one here. Uh, what we want to do is actually bring this down. So we're sort of um, we're sort of raising the bottom end point, if you will. So we're gonna bring this number down until the motor turns on. So let's see, 80, so about 80. Let's go up one and maybe two for good measure. So now, now look at the throttle right here and you see how little I have to move it. And that's good because it's kind of gonna give us a little bit more resolution um, and you won't have this weird kind of dead space uh, at the very bottom of the, of the throttle stick travel. Now you might want some space to make sure that you don't accidentally you know, bump it a tiny bit or just to make sure that your motor will shut off. So maybe you know, 80, 84 and that seems to be pretty good. So then we have, you know, we still have that throttle curve there. There you go, everybody. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. If it was, let me know, leave me a comment. And if you still have questions about this, leave me a comment. Maybe I or someone else will be able to help you. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. And I will see you again very soon.